In history, those who left their mark haven't always tried to be on the good side of world events, and the golden age of piracy was filled with notorious captains and sailors who decided to rob the high seas. But one of these pirates would be a woman who would become a feared name across the seas of the West Indies, Anne Bonny. Anne was born near Cork in Ireland, the illegitimate daughter of a lawyer, William Cormack, and his maidservant, Mary Brennan. William was already married, and when his wife was away at her mother-in-law's house recovering from an illness, he began an affair with Mary. When she first gave birth to Anne, William tried to present her as his legitimate daughter, which obviously didn't go down well with the rest of his family. He moved to London with his daughter, dressing her as a boy and calling her Andy, also bringing her up to be a lawyer's clerk. It was Cormac's wife who came from a wealthy background, and when she found out, she stopped her husband's allowance. Left with little choice but to start again, William made the decision to move to the province of Carolina, an area that covered large amounts of the southeast of present-day USA. He took Anne and her mother Mary with him, setting them up as a family. This early part of Anne's life was unusual, and the idea of presenting as a boy would come up in later years during her piratical career. William tried to set up as a lawyer but struggled to find enough work. However, his knowledge of the law and salesman skills allowed him to gain enough money to buy a townhouse as a home for his new family and a plantation. Little is known of Anne's childhood years in America, but when she was about 12, her mother died. After this, the fiery temper she would become known for came out, and apparently when she was 13, she stabbed a servant girl. It was an omen of what she would become. When she was 20 years old in 1718, Anne met a penniless sailor called James Bonney and married him. Her father was very disapproving of the marriage, and even more so when it became clear James hoped to one day gain his new father-in-law's plantation. Anne was thrown out into the street, and the young couple decided to move to Nassau, on New Providence Island in the Bahamas. Specifically, there was a pirate colony in Nassau, in modern times known as the Republic of Pirates. The Republic of Pirates was a relaxed confederacy run by pirates and privateers turned pirates, governed by an informal code to treat other pirates with civility and to vote on who led their ships. Anne and James looked for work on the island, rubbing shoulders with many pirates in the taverns. It wasn't long before James, in a bid to make money for himself and his young wife, became an informer for the governor of the island, something which Anne apparently disliked. Eventually, Anne met with John Rackham, otherwise known by the name Calico Jack, due to his colourful calico clothing, and the pair became lovers. Calico Jack had arrived in the Bahamas in 1719 when a king's pardon was offered to all pirates who surrendered to the authorities. James was understandably angry when he found out, but Jack decided to ask him to divorce Anne if he was paid a sum of money. James refused, so instead, Jack convinced Anne to run away with him to sea. She agreed, dressing as a man and becoming a member of his crew, the entire thing also completely in violation of the king's pardon. Anne fell pregnant, and sometime before 1720, she sailed to Cuba with Jack, where she gave birth to their child. Sadly, nothing is recorded of this child, so we don't even know if they survived to adulthood, and if they did, where they lived. Soon after giving birth, Anne once again rejoined Jack as a member of his crew, dressed as a man, and following a life of piracy attacking ships in the Caribbean. It was around this time that another woman joined Jack's crew, Mary Reed. Not that anyone knew she was Mary to start with, as she, like Anne, dressed in men's clothing and had been brought up as a boy. 
She was part of a crew on board a ship Jack captured and she joined his crew after capture. The two women instantly became close friends and according to later witnesses, two of the fiercest members of the crew. It's not surprising they became friends considering what they had in common, but their closeness meant Jack began to suspect them, still thinking Mary was a man of having an affair, in order to abate his worries and let him in on Mary's secret. An escaped victim of their crew, a woman called Dorothy Thomas, would later describe them as wearing men's jackets and long trousers and handkerchiefs tied about their heads and each of them had a machete and a pistol in their hands and they cursed and swore at the men to murder her. They may have been friends, but Anne and Mary were not pleasant people. Obviously, it wouldn't be long before they were in the crosshairs of the authorities and Captain Woods Rogers, the governor of the Bahamas, issued a proclamation on the 5th of September 1720. It was printed in the Boston Gazette and stated that Calico Jack had, along with 12 others, including two women by name, Anne Fulford, Elias Bonney and Mary Reed, stolen a 12-ton sloop named the William. It also added that the entire crew had committed many acts of violence and criminal damage, as well as the obvious charge of piracy. The crew began to sail on the William, continuing their lives of piracy. The governor of Jamaica, Sir Nicholas Laws, instructed Captain Jonathan Barnett to hunt them down. Barnett took to the sea with two sloops, the Tiger, armed with several guns and 20 sailors from the Royal Navy, and the Mary Ann, with a crew of 20 men, who ironically were led by a former pirate, Jean Bonadvise. Around or on the 31st of October 1720, Jack's ship was laid at anchor near Negril, and a gun was randomly fired. Bonavice's ship happened to be nearby, and so when they heard the noise, they decided to investigate. It was reported back to Barnett, who sailed out to look for himself, and at around 10pm, he called out to the William and demanded they identify themselves. Obviously, they weren't about to admit to being pirates, but the reply came, John Rackham from Cuba. It was a bit of a daft answer, as obviously Calico Jack was exactly who Barnett was looking for, and he shouted out to the ship to strike their colours, a naval term meaning they should lower their ship's flag of allegiance in a motion of surrender. Barnett would later testify it was too dark for him to see who replied, but someone from the sloop cried out that they would not surrender, and a swivel gun was fired at the tiger. Unsurprisingly, this wasn't going to be taken lightly, and Barnett immediately ordered a broadside. In this context, all the guns from the side of his ship firing at the same time. The action destroyed the boom arm on the William, and the crew had little choice but to surrender and admit defeat. They were brought to Spanish town on the mainland in Jamaica and confined within the jail. On the 16th of November 1720, Sir Nicholas Laws himself presided over an admiralty court in which Calico Jack and the ten men in his crew were brought on trial. There was little to say in their defence and so they were found guilty of piracy and hanged a few days later. On the 28th of November, it was the turn of Anne Bonny and Mary Reed and they too were found guilty of piracy and condemned to death. When Anne was tried, many of the planters on the island would have known her father personally and this was thought it might go in her favour, but sadly her flight years earlier went against her. But both Anne and Mary pleaded the belly as it was known, or in other words, said they were pregnant. Being pregnant automatically meant a woman's sentence was postponed at least until after she had given birth. 
While it seems extraordinary that both women were pregnant at the trial, they would, of course, have had to prove it. Mary Reed would die while still in prison, most likely from a postpartum infection, and she was buried on the 28th of April 1721. Anne, on the other hand, has a much more mysterious fate. There is no record of either her burial or her release, which has led to speculation over Anne possibly escaping justice. While the evidence is scanty and likely just a romantic notion, some of Anne's descendants claim to have found sources showing her father managed to secure her release from jail and brought her to Charlestown, South Carolina. Here, she apparently gave birth to Calico Jack's second child before going on to marry a man called Joseph Burley. Anne would then supposedly give birth to eight more children and die a respectable woman in 1782 at the age of 84. However, this is very fragile evidence and sadly not likely, especially considering Anne's character. It's far more likely that the burial records for Anne are simply missing or in a place no one has looked yet and that she likely died around the same time as Mary in 1721. Anne was a fascinating character from the golden age of piracy though and despite the awful nature of the fact she was a violent and bloodthirsty pirate, she was also a pioneer in being a female pirate. She became part of a male-dominated world by using a combination of cross-dressing, seduction and violence, rebelling against the constraints of the lifestyle demanded of women in the early 18th century. Love her or hate her, Anne Bonny certainly left a black-hearted mark in the pages of history. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss any new documentaries.